guys welcome back today I am doing a 12 by 12 layout and I'm starting with a nice clean white piece of cardstock and some of my Lindy stamp gang and my Heidi swap color shine sprays so first I'm gonna be using this yellow spray which I think is called mustard and then I'm gonna be using these two Lindy stamp gang sprays one's kind of a peach color I think it's called champagne or fuzzy navel peach or something like that and then I'm also going to use this blue color here in a second and just add a little bit all over the page this collection that I'm using has a lot of these same colors in it so I want to mimic the colors in the background papers to the colors on the background here so I'm just kind of playing here trying to figure out where I want to put everything and I'm just going to dab a little bit of blue not a whole ton and I'm gonna keep adding and adding until I'm happy with the background and for this one I actually didn't end up putting any gesso or anything so the color pretty much goes and stays where I put it so I don't have a lot of opportunity to move it around so it's just pretty much going down on the background and staying and also the reason I wanted to put the blue down was it went really well with the pictures that I'm using there the my daughter and her friend in the pool and they're eating a popsicle so I was thought it was a perfect um, title tasty treats for this one so you'll see me add that later on with one of the chipboard embellishments that came in this kit so for all of these I am just using the packaging technique for the Heidi swap it is a bit of a thicker ink so my Lindy stamp gang is much more watery kind of like shimmer shimmers is a pretty um, more of a loose product but Heidi swap color shine is a bit thicker so a lot of times I will end up adding a little bit of water to that just to thin it out because I want it to be more of a translucent look than um, a thicker paint look so I just do that with some water and then that kind of helps move it around the page a bit more too. So now I am figuring out what I want to do with these photos. So I am going to be mounting them on this colored kind of like a sea foamy kind of green cardstock. And I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but this is an old Scraptastic kit that I'm using from probably two or three years ago. I think one summer. Yeah, I think it's been almost two years ago at least maybe three. But I really, really like this kit, and I was really excited to use it um, with these these pool photos. So you're going to see me just trying to figure out how I want to have these photos. I am going to kind of stack them like you see there. But now I'm just figuring out what I want to all mat these on. So for this one, I'm just going to mat it on this fun background, which this is kind of what I use to mimic the background um, paper, the white paper. So I use these colors here and I thought that would be a good combination for the background. So now I'm just mounting my photos on a few of the sheets that I really like. And this one I really, really like the ombre paper, but I am just going to snip off a piece of that to mat the photo. And then I'm going to do something very similar to the other photo. So I'm just picking out little pieces and scraps until I'm happy with the background. And then once I'm happy with that, I will start gluing everything down. So now I'm going to work on that top photo. I am going to take a piece of one of these cut apart sheets and then add this to the background. I think I'm doing that starburst pink pattern. And I'll add that as one of my layers of my cluster. And I'm just using my scissors to trim this out. It seems like the easiest way. You can use your paper trimmer too, but sometimes my scissors is the easiest. And I really like these Tim Holtz scissors too because they seem to really cut a very nice straight line. So I highly recommend them. If you don't have any of the Tim Holtz um, scissors, I would definitely recommend using them or getting them. So I decided to cut that starburst card apart because then I can use it on both sides of this photo and now I'm just trying to add a couple more pieces to that top photo so that I can have a full kind of layer in the background because I did want to have some separation from the busy um, mixed media background that I put on so by adding some of these paper pieces that really helps um, do that so now I'm just going to start gluing everything down. I'm happy with the placement, and so I don't have to move anything. I'm kind of putting the glue on the back of the photo, sticking those down, and that pretty much holds the paper layers that I did down. And then I will just add some more adhesive to make sure the whole shebang sticks. So I did use mixed media on this, but because it doesn't have any gesso in the background, the ATG gun works pretty well for the background. If I did use a gesso or something like that, it kind of has a tooth to it and it doesn't stick very well. So I highly recommend if you use gesso or anything like that in the background that you do use um, a stronger or a liquid adhesive on the background. That seems to work better. So I'm going to trim this out because although I do like the white background, I really feel like a lot of times when I use white background that the... 
I don't know, page seems very floaty. It doesn't seem finished on the edges. So what I will do in those cases is I'll either draw like a squiggly line around the edge, kind of framing the whole layout in, or I will trim off some of the outside edge and then add in a cardstock background. So this is the time when I decided to trim some off and add some cardstock background. And so I'm going to decide on this pink here. I am going to gut out the middle of the cardstock so I can use the other pieces later on with the rest of this kit. And then I just glue around the edges and then as carefully as possible, glue this down, trying to get it as even as possible. It doesn't always work as well as I'd hope, but it ends up working out in the end, so I'm happy with it. So now I'm going to take these awesome chipboard stickers, or chip, chipboard phrases, that's the word, and I am going to end up using Tasty Treats. I do think I use another one at first, thinking I'm going to use, yeah, that Good Times, but I want something that's more stacked on top of each other, so I'm going to end up using the Tasty Treats one. So you'll see me putting that in the bottom. And right now it says Treats Tasty. I don't, I wonder if I kept it like that. I could have kept it like that instead of putting Tasty Treats. We shall see together. It was supposed to say Tasty Treats, but I think it was that way on the sticker sheet now that I'm looking at it. I don't know. Anyway, I think it's fine either way. It's all good. I'm not going to go back to my layout if I do put it that way. Um... I like how that Y kind of hangs down anyway. So from a design standpoint, I do like it better that way. So it's all good. So I do use quite a bit of embellishments on this layout. There was lots and lots and lots of die cuts in the pack that we got with the Scraptastic kit. So I was very, very excited. And I wanted to use pretty much everything on the layout, but I tried to refrain and not use everything. But I do use quite a bit. I had a lot of fun playing with all these little bits and pieces. That's probably my favorite. I love the kit clubs that have lots and lots of the ephemera pieces because then you just feel like you get a lot more for your money. And those are the kit clubs I, I really, really like. So I did like Scraptastic Kit Club a lot because of that. Um, because when you got the main kit and the add-on, you always got so many goodies. And it just lasted you even past the point when you had all the paper used up. You still have lots of bits and pieces. And I always ended up using those in my um, project life. So anything left over from kits, I always put in my project life stash. And it always gets good use. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I like when I have leftover embellishments at the end of the kit. So I'm just kind of going through everything that I have here and figuring out what I like best, adding them in. And once I'm all happy with all of the bits and pieces, I will end up gluing them down. I do spare you watching me glue all those little pieces down. So in a little while, you'll kind of see it fast forward to me finishing um, this and having them all glued down. But for now, I'm still trying to figure out what else I want to add to the page. I love those little bows. I don't believe I use any on this paper page, but I do love them. I am using one of these acrylic words, which is fun. And I just use a liquid glue to add that on. And in order for you not to see the, the liquid glue through the acrylic shape, because it is kind of translucent, you can just add the glue kind of all over. And then what I use is my finger and just kind of make sure it's spread all over the background. And then when you stick it down, because it's all over the background, it, you don't necessarily see that you use liquid glue. So that's a tip if you're using these kind of acrylic pieces on your layouts to make sure that the adhesive doesn't show through. So, like I said, this kit came with a ton of stuff. So I definitely am looking through and pulling more and more. I love all the little glittery gold pieces too, so that also was fun. I think the final thing I'm going to add is this sun there and I think this is where I start gluing stuff down if I remember. Nope. I lied. I'm pulling out more stuff. More, more, more stuff. It's never gonna end. There's an abundance of die cuts and I just felt like I was gonna use them all on this page apparently. Oh, I found a popsicle with some gold on it. Perfect accent. Now everything's glued down, finally. So in the top cluster, I do have a couple of these tags. I don't like leaving my tags naked, so I almost always put twine on my tags or string or thread or something. So I'm going to add this Baker's Twine. It's kind of a brown and white twine. I'm going to add that to the two tags. And then I'm also going to roll up kind of two little rolls, and I will add those rolls of the twine to the left hand cluster. I didn't really like having just the twine in the tags and I felt like it was needed someplace else. So I will add that piece there and I think I add one more little roll of it down in the bottom right. Again just to kind of bring that twine around the page. And with these chipboard stickers, they always never want to stick, so I do end up adding a bit more adhesive behind them to make sure that they don't fall off the page. 
and that liquid glue is just some scotch tacky glue and then I put it in a fine liner bottle. You can get those fine liner bottles from Amazon or Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon. It's a great deal. Just go in the model car kind of section. That's where they are at Hobby Lobby, at least mine. Now I'm taking one of the sticker sheets and adding a few more bits and bobs to the layout. I'm going to first add these little triangle stickers and I'm just using my little Tim Holtz pokey tool to kind of help me place them. Um, another good way to place little bitty tiny things is with your tweezers. So these were sticky so the pokey tool worked pretty well but if it's not sticky tweezers is a good option. And then that just kind of gets your fingers out of the way and you can kind of semi audition the pieces before you actually commit to gluing them down. And sometimes I like that. When I have my hands in the way, sometimes it's hard to tell if I'm going to like something in a certain spot. So while I'm finishing up here, I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me. If you like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know you are enjoying my videos. If you also um, really enjoy my videos, you can definitely subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate all of my subscribers, all my new and old subscribers. They've been around a long time, and I, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. And definitely if you have any comments about anything I did on the layout, any questions about um, products I used or just anything, um, you can definitely leave those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I try to check my comments about every day, every other day, so I will normally get back with you within about 24 to 48 hours unless crazy stuff is happening like life. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for some close-ups and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Bye-bye.